this is Donna Lay, and I'm going to talk to you today about a fun technique you can try when you do your grand tableau. And the grand tableau is, of course, when you have all 36 cards down. And, of course, you know your significator is either the man or the woman, depending on who you're reading. So here we have our woman, here we have our man. Now, this is actually the second time I shuffled. For this particular spread, what happened is the first time I shuffled, the woman came out, it was right over here in one of the first two rows. So I put the cards back together, shuffled again, and then she came out over here. <laughs> now, if a significator is at the very beginning of the grand tableau or at the very end, it can be frustrating and not a good read. And here's why. You may have heard me say this in other videos, uh, if it ends up in the beginning, what you can do is see a lot of future, but you cannot validate the past. The past is important because it confirms what's going on, uh, and it gives you trust in the reading. If the significator ends up at the end, you're going to be able to tell them all about their past. And the reason they came to you to find out what's going to happen, <laughs> you won't know, because there won't really be much for lines in the future to read. So when I reshuffled this and the woman first was here and then showed up here, I, something about this reading made me feel like it was right for her. Um, and yet I wanted to be able to tell her what was about to happen. And so what happened basically here is I ended up with a great past and one line to tell, talk about what was about to come. That wasn't enough for me. So I didn't want to reshuffle. I felt very strongly that this spread represented her, so I wanted to work with it. So here's what I did. Now I'm hiding this from you, so let's open this up. I took and two more decks. You don't need to use two decks. You can use one if you wish. And in the cards that are in the bottom were put down first. Those actually represent houses. So where each of these is on a house, uh, I have houses underneath, and then the cards that are on top are the actual reading cards. So for example, here we have the cross on the house of the child. Here we have the child on the house of the birds. We have the snake on the house of the broom and whip. So this gives great information, and now we have lines ahead of her that we can read a nice future for the next several months. Now, if you don't like the complexity of the houses and you prefer just to put one card down instead of the two so it would look like this, that's okay too. Whatever works for you is okay. Now here's something that I found was interesting. This actually is three decks. So I have the whole first deck, which is a Los Scarabeo deck. I took the borders off. The ones in the bottom are the French Cartomancy. These in the top of the little mini postmark Lenormand by Melissa Hill, so cute. And here's what we found. The snake is here and here. And also, if you look at the front of the spread, it is actually the first card down, which for me is extremely significant in a reading. That's three times in one reading, and that's ex this snake ended up being a very critical part of her reading. Another thing I noticed is we had two crosses here side by side. That also ended up being significant, as was the development of what happened in the houses underneath. So that showed the progression of what was happening. And um, it, it was very interesting to see her go from a very difficult past to transition into some difficulty that ended up in a nice uh, future. Another just kind of fluky thing that happened here is here's the woman and she's on the coffin. The coffin happened to be back here, but also if you look at the end, because I used another deck, it was the last card down, which was extremely significant to her reading. So having the multiple decks actually showed a really neat rollover that never would have happened in the same way. What I did find is that using this technique, although it is not a traditional Lenormand method, was actually extremely accurate. So since her, I've been toying around with this and using it on myself, and I've tried it with a couple clients, and I am really, really enjoying what I'm seeing. Now most of the time, your significator will come out in the body of the reading, which is where you want it. But when it doesn't, just to let you know, if you shuffle a couple times and you don't feel like laying down the cards yet another time, or you don't want your client to wait, this may be an opportunity that you can give them something on the spot 
without having to uh, fold up the reading. Similarly, if she comes up in the beginning, what you can do is the same thing, is just put the cards out to the left side, so then now you have a couple of rows out to the left to look at her past, to validate what's going on, so then you can now focus on the cards of the future. So that's it. Quick and easy, and I hope that this adds a little something to your readings and those kind of emergency spots when you put down all the cards and panic because your significator is either at the beginning or at the very end of the spread. So have fun with this, and I would really love to hear what happens with you when you try this at home.